Hello, my name is Jimmy Rish. Microsoft Japan awarded me InfoPath MVP last year. I spend a lot of time helping people in the InfoPath Dev Forum online. I am a software developer for Qdabra Software. Qdabra provides InfoPath tools, forms, and solutions to the InfoPath community. I work out of my virtual office in Kyoto. In this video, I will show you how to take an existing WCF web service and modify it so that it can be accessed as a REST web service. In this presentation, first I'll talk about what exactly REST is, followed by a comparison of some of the differences between REST and SOAP. Lastly, I'll conclude with a demo of how to convert your web service to a REST-enabled web service. This corresponds to the instructions in the hands-on lab that goes with this video. So what is REST? Well, REST is an acronym that stands for Representational State Transfer, and it's a design pattern for creating web services to serve up data. It was originally defined in the year 2000, but has only recently started to gain widespread popularity. REST is characterized by taking advantage of existing HTTP conventions. For example, REST utilizes GET requests to retrieve data, POST or PUT requests to add or modify data, and DELETE to remove data from a web server. This is in contrast to SOAP, which uses POST for all of its requests. Also unlike SOAP, REST has no standard format or protocols for sending or retrieving data, aside from the HTTP standards themselves. However, XML and JSON are two popular formats for sending and retrieving data to and from a web server. Another characteristic of REST is that it provides access to data using hierarchical URLs, much like a file-based web server. REST is currently gaining support in a lot of areas. Office 365 uses it extensively and was designed with REST in mind. Excel's PowerPivot add-on has built-in support for querying OData data sources using the REST paradigm. With InfoPath 2010, you can now query REST data from your InfoPath forms. And lastly, since REST works off of ordinary HTTP protocols, you can use any web browser to query many REST data sources. One nice characteristic of REST is that it's easy to troubleshoot a REST web service by just using any web browser. Simply type in the URL to access and off you go. Your browser will show you the data and you can thoroughly inspect it to make sure it's behaving correctly. So let's look at a comparison of a REST web request as compared to a SOAP request. The upper screenshot is an example of a SOAP method call. We can see that it is calling a method called get college departments and involves a POST request. We can also see that the request contains a large chunk of XML which is the standard SOAP XML format. Deep inside this we can see that the request contains a single parameter value DENT for a parameter called college ID. Now look at the lower screenshot. This is an example of a comparable REST request. Notice that this request is a GET request, as it's retrieving data. It contains no data aside from its five headers. The same parameter value, DENT, is specified in the URL itself. Note also that the URL is an example of the hierarchical structure I was talking about earlier. It is selecting a single college from the colleges on the server and retrieving data for the departments in that college. This is analogous to the get college department SOAP method above. Now let's look at an example of responses for both types of web service. In the upper left is an example of a SOAP response for the request in the previous slide. The response contains a payload of XML. This XML is wrapped with two standard SOAP nodes, envelope and body, followed by two more nodes with names based on the web method name, get college department's response 
and Get College Department's result. The actual data appears five levels down in the form of department nodes. In the case of the REST response to the lower right, here again the data appears as XML, but you will notice that here only the data itself is being returned, without any additional wrapper nodes. This is the essence of REST. The way of thinking about SOAP and REST web services is a little different too. With SOAP, a web service consists of a set of web methods, with each possessing its own set of input parameters and whose data types are clearly defined. When calling a SOAP web method, the request and response use a special XML format to represent all of the data. The REST design is somewhat simpler. Typically, one retrieves data from REST using a hierarchical URL to indicate what data they want. The first URL on this slide indicates that we want to know all of the departments within a certain college with the ID DENT. The second URL is retrieving all of the professors in a department with the ID GEOG. So let's talk about REST enabling a WCF web service. If you already have a WCF web service, there are two main steps to doing this. The first step is to specify attributes in your code to indicate the URL formats that will correspond to each web method in the service. After that, there are a few changes to make to the service's web config file. The sample service we will be modifying has seven web methods. The green text shows the corresponding URL formats we will be using to access each one. These URL formats have been chosen to intuitively indicate the type of data being retrieved. Here are three examples of web method declarations with attributes added to indicate their URL formats. We use an attribute called webget and its named parameter URI template to specify the URL format to use. We also use the response format parameter to indicate that the data should be returned as XML. Notice that in the case of get college departments method, which takes one argument, the URL format is constructed so that it contains a place for that argument contained in curly braces. Also note that it is important that this placeholder have the same spelling and capitalization as the actual parameter name. Once you have set up the URL formats for your methods, there are a few modifications to make to the service's web config file. In the case of our example service, you'll need to add an endpoint behaviors, services, and HTTP runtime node, and this will often be the case for your web services as well. The endpoint behaviors and services node tell the service to act as a REST service. Additionally, the services node specifies the class to bind the web service to. HTTP runtime is a web config node that allows specifying a wide variety of options for a web service. In our particular case, we need to use it to change the set of characters that are allowed in URLs requested from the server. By default, all URLs containing angle brackets, asterisk, percent, ampersand, colon, backslash, or question mark are denied. Since some college IDs in our service contain an ampersand, we need to allow it. So we will use the request path invalid characters attribute to block all the default characters except ampersand. So let's dive into our demo and see how to REST enable a WCF web service. We first open the iUniversity directory file, which is where the seven web methods are declared. We begin adding a web get attribute to the get colleges method to specify a URI template of colleges. 
We then copy down this attribute to the other six method declarations so that we can edit it easily. We set the URI template for get departments to departments. The URI template for get college departments to colleges parentheses college ID slash departments. Similarly for get professors, get department professors. Get department courses. And finally, get professor courses. Now that we've done this, we can save the file and open web config. To make sure I get everything right, I've added the nodes in advance, and I am now uncommenting them. I suggest you do similarly and copy these from the tutorials text. We now build the solution to make sure that there are no errors. And it built. So now I right click the university directory title, select debug, and then start new instance. This will open up a browser window positioned at a temporary local host. Since the name of our service is universitydirectory.svc, all of our URLs are going to contain this. We'll start off by querying a list of all the colleges. We'll then take one of these colleges, Engineering, and use it in another URL to get all the departments in that college. As you'll see, if we remove the colleges part from this URL and query all departments, there are several more in the system. We'll then take the name of one department, ART, and use it to query all the courses in that department. We can also query all the professors in that department. Here again, listing all of the professors in the system reveals a considerably longer list. Finally, we'll take the name of one professor, David Simpson, and use that to query all of the courses that he teaches. We have now tested out all of the web methods available in this service. In this demo, I showed you the simple steps you can take to convert your WCF SOAP web service to a REST-based service. You learned how to add WebGet attributes to your methods to define their URL formats and how to modify WebConfig to indicate your service as a REST service. You also saw how to access this REST service in a browser and pass values to its various access URLs. Now you have everything you need to take advantage of the power of REST. I encourage you to visit these links to learn more about this and other topics in this training course. This is Jimmy Risch of Qdabra Software demonstrating an Office 365 technique for InfoPath and I would like to thank you for joining me today.